Let us stand. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But, but if we confess our, our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most, Most merciful God, God we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Dear beloved, I have good news. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. Magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you show mercy to your people in all their troubles. Grant us always to recognize your goodness, give thanks for your compassion, and praise your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Ruth chapter 1. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a man of Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These two took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. They lived there about ten years, and both Malon and Kilion died. So the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law to return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the fields of Moab that the Lord had visited his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she was with her two daughters-in-law, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each of you to her mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you, with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voices and wept. And they said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb, that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, even if I should have a husband this night and should bear sons, would you wait, therefore, till they were grown? Would you, therefore, refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, for it is exceedingly bitter to me for your sake that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not urge me to leave you, or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts me from you. And when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from 2 Timothy chapter 2. You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits, since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. It is the hard-working farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering bound with chains as a criminal. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. 
The saying is trustworthy, for if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Gracious Father, be with us as your word comes to us to refresh, strengthen, and make us alive according to your mercy. Strengthen us that we may cling to all the gifts that you give to us as we await the resurrection and the life to come. 
To this end, use the words that flow from these lips to proclaim your great mercy in Christ Jesus. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we have a wonderful gospel lesson. We have our Lord, and he is on his way to Jerusalem. And we have the ten lepers who see our Lord coming. And it's amazing that they see him coming. They know who he is. And so we can surmise that his fame, uh, who he is and what he has done, has gone before him. And maybe the lepers were waiting and hoping to run into him. And we see that the ten lepers, when they recognize who Jesus is, would lifted up their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. It's very interesting that these people, the lepers, and they by law are required to announce who they are to anybody passing by so that they know that they can take a wide berth around them as, so not to become infected with leprosy. And so these ten lepers who are outcasted, they come and they see Jesus. And notice what they do not say. Jesus, you're here. Rescue, save, heal us. Let us go back to our families. Heal us so we can go back to work. Heal us so we can have our lives back. They, they say nothing of the sort. They simply say, have mercy on us. It is here in those words that we find the work of God given and delivered to us. We see that he says, go, Jesus says, go and show yourselves to the priest. And they leave. And I'm curious. I, I don't know what the discussion was as they were walking uh, to go to the temple, to go show themselves to the priest. When it dawned on them that they were clean, that their skin was healed. For we must remember that leprosy was this horrible disease. It was literally your skin and your body rotting as you lived and suffered through that. So as they were walking to go, one of them realizes I'm clean and stops, turns, and goes back to Christ. And the ten continue to go to the temple. This is an interesting thing that only one figures this out. And with this, we see that he does, uh, he goes to Jesus, and he falls on his face, and he worships. He praises God. He sees where this work comes from. Now, the great thing about this, and the thing that we get to see, is where are we? Who and what are we? You heard in the announcements that we are in the midst of the stewardship campaign. The little blue sheet was in your bulletin. And a month ago, when the stewardship committee was talking about this, they pointed this text out. And I got excited because what a great chance to guilt you guys into doing what you need to do for stewardship. But that would be a misuse of the text. It would be a misuse of what our Lord gives to us. Because you don't hold the blue sheet and we don't yell, Lord, have mercy on us. We get to see who and what we are. We get to see where we are. Last week we talked about the preparatory rite, the confession and absolution. We stand outside of the chancel and we confess to God our sinfulness. We confess to God our need for what he gives and delivers through Christ our Lord. And then we enter in and we had the introit and in the midst of the introit we have made it into the chancel. We stand before the Holy of Holies and we thank and praise God. We sing of what he is doing and we are in the presence to receive. And then we change. We move into the Kyrie and we start saying, Lord, have mercy. We echo what the, the lepers have said. And it's interesting. We do this right before the altar. Now, we just confessed our sins. Our sins have been taken away. We have been pronounced forgiven. We have been pronounced alive. We have been pronounced righteous. We've made it before the altar of God. So why are we once again laying ourselves out and saying, Lord, have mercy? The whole tone changes. We take a somber attitude. We take a somber tone 
before the altar when we announce, profess, and state, Lord, have mercy. It is in those words we do what the lepers do. We recognize that God in Christ our Lord is the only place in which we can find mercy, the only place we can have mercy. And so we stand before the altar of God and we lay ourselves out and we say, Lord, have mercy. And in this statement, we are commending ourselves to God, to his care. We are saying, God, you have forgiven us. God, you have brought us here in this place. And we are responding to your love, your compassion, your pity, your peace, your forgiveness, your mercy. Continue to have mercy. Continue to deliver your gifts. Continue your faithfulness upon us. This is the covenant of God. For God has promised to come and deliver himself to us. And we stand before the altar, before the mercy seat, and we say, Lord, continue your mercies upon us. Let us live there according to your mercy as you continue to give us your forgiveness as you continue to lay your righteousness upon us. Which kind of takes us right back to uh, what St. Paul is telling us in the letter to Timothy. St. Paul tells us, but the word of God is not bound. This is a huge statement. Because if anything needs to be bound, it's us. It's who and what we are. We should only have a little bit of what God gives us. Because we don't deserve what he does. We don't even have the full comprehension of all that he does and continues to do out of his good and gracious mercy. But what does he do? He opens the gates to himself and unleashes his word upon you. You're not just simply forgiven. You're not patted on the back and say, hope you do better next time. You are brought into his presence where he says, my word is spoken, given, and delivered to you. And we, like that one leper, come and recognize it is here where God delivers himself. We get to thank, praise, worship God as the source of our life, not just our earthly life, but the life that has been given to us in our baptism, the life that has been given to us in the very body and blood of Christ, the life that has been won for us in the pronouncement of the forgiveness of sins. His word has been unleashed and laid upon you to make you the children of God, to make you his treasured, possessions. This is what you get to have, and this is who you get to be. And so when the midst of our leprosy of sin that is eating us alive, we know that our sins have been, been forgiven. Our life has been given and laid upon us according to his mercy. Now, this is all great and grand and wonderful as we reside in the chancel before the altar of God. But we have to leave this place. We have to leave this sanctuary. And we go back out into the world. But we don't leave this here. We don't say, oh, that was great. i got to go back to work. No, we go taking this. We go filled with that very word laid in and upon us. We go back out into the world changed, made alive, so that no matter where God has placed you in your vocation, let it be husband, wife, brother, sister, whatever, you go out into the world worshiping God in all your thoughts, all your words, and all your deeds, because mercy has been given to you. And you get to go out into the world in mercy, to show mercy, to have mercy. For that is exactly what has been given to you. So here and now, let us rejoice. Let us be glad in all the work that our Lord has, been gi has given to you. And then take this work. Take this mercy. 
and go out into the world and live according to what he has given you, which is nothing less than his life, which is your life unto the resurrection and life forever. This is yours in the faith created and sustained by God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. We stand and confess together the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He sent redemption to his people. Even if we are faithless, he remains faithful. So let us lift our prayers to his throne of grace. Faithful Lord, in the midst of trouble and in the face of death, grant to us the faith you gave to Naomi, so that we never doubt that you will provide our daily bread and carry us through the shadow of death. Assure us when we face persecution for our faith, that when we have died with Christ, we will also live with Christ. Guard and strengthen our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted for the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful Lord, entrust your gospel to faithful men who will be able to teach others. Keep our pastors, missionaries, and synod leaders true to you. Strengthen them for their vocations. Prevent them from becoming entangled in civilian pursuits so that they remain prepared, like Paul, to suffer everything for the sake of the elect. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful Lord, provide families for children who do not have parents. Strengthen all parents for their tasks, including those whose love has led them to adopt. Raise up foster parents and provide for children through the foster care system. Especially guard and protect those who are abused and neglected. Through your church, supply their needs and assure them of your never-ending love. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful Lord, as you used Naomi and Ruth to care for each other, use us to be caring friends who are willing to sacrifice for each other and declare together, Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Thank you for the example of trust in you and the loving deeds for each other that have been set by all your saints. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful Lord, turn the hearts of unbelievers to trust in Jesus Christ. Bestow on them faith that makes them well. Change the hearts and minds of those in our society who misuse your gift of marriage and permit the murder of unborn children. Teach them and us that doing what you command is not burdensome, but makes our lives together fuller and more meaningful. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful Lord, as you cleanse the lepers by the gracious working of your Son, bring your help and healing into the lives of those who suffer in any way today. 
Grant them patience, faith, and trusting hearts. Especially we pray for Doris, Elaine, Dana, Karen, Kathy, Pat, Mary, Craig, Ron, and Sandy, Virginia, Joanne, Frank, Chuck, Kelsey, Bill, Cynthia, Dorothy, Brenda, Harley, Steve, Ellen. And for Pastor Larry Eckhart and members of Island Lutheran Church. Whether you heal, heal their bodies now or at the resurrection, teach them and all of us to join the cleansed leper in singing thanks to you. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful Lord, you provided food for the bodies of Naomi and Ruth. Provide food for both our bodies and souls as you nourish us with the body and blood of your Son and our Redeemer. Grant us faith that approaches your table with repentance and leaves your table strengthened to do your work in this world. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, faithful Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the offering.
lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you.